Hey, good morning. My name's Casey and welcome to Active at Home. We hope you're enjoying your Sunday morning this morning. We have an awesome service planned for you guys. But before we do, do us a favor, hit that share button, hit that like button. It just gets it out there. It gets the word out there. And who knows who needs to hear the message today. Also, if you're watching on our YouTube or if you're not, you can go to YouTube right now and you can subscribe to our channel. We're almost at one thousand subscribers and we post content on there all the time for you to enjoy so we'd love for you to do that and if you're new and you're watching for the first time let us know in the comment section send us a private message however you'd like to do that we want to connect with you and send you a free gift so please connect with us if you're new hey we have some church news just for you something that i'm excited about and very close to my heart is kids blitz that is coming up june 14th through the 16th and is completely free for you and your family to sign up and we cannot wait for it so make sure you guys do it in the description below there will be a link to sign up for kids blitz with all the information that you will need we are so excited and if you'd like to volunteer and help out at kids blitz we're going to need your help it's going to be in a big big event and your help would be very appreciated so make sure you guys sign up whether you're registering for a kid or you're registering to volunteer Coming up next week is Mother's Day, May 8th, and we're gonna be celebrating all moms and mother figures here at Active Church. So we would love for you to come join us, 9 a.m., 1045, come be celebrated, moms. We love you guys. You're so important to all our lives, and so we would love to take some time to appreciate you. Something that Active is very excited to announce and we're doing for the very first time in our history is we're hosting a leadership summit July 23rd. Mark your calendars for July 23rd. I know it's far out, but it's gonna come up fast, but we wanna invest in the leaders in our community and we're hosting it right here in our own campus. So make sure you guys come. It's completely free for you to join us. We're gonna have some amazing speakers that are gonna be here to empower you as leaders in our city and so please come join us learn some more about leadership and how we can lead better together it's almost time for pastor mike's message we're in week two of our series all together now it's been a great series and we're glad that you're joining us for it but before we get into his message we are going to go into a time of worship and sing some words to god together so prepare how you like to prepare for worship and let's get ready to sing together
God shield the promise Your very body began to breathe And out of the silence The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me And then came the morning that shield the promise Hey, welcome to Active Church, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here, whether you're watching or you're listening. Thanks for being a part of the story that God is writing here at Active. My name is Mike. I serve as the lead pastor, and I love being married. Don't worry, I'm not going to get really cheesy or really sappy with you, at least right now, maybe later. But I love being married to my wife. She is my best friend, and I love doing life with her. From the very beginning, we were taught by a really great mentor couple, Rick and Sharon, that no matter what we're facing, always remember that we're on the same team, that we're wearing the same jersey, that we're trying to accomplish something together. We're building a better future together. And so from the beginning, we've decided that there was gonna be nothing off limits in our relationship, that we were gonna work on our marriage while we make it work. We're gonna talk about everything. We're gonna dive in. We're gonna be honest because I wanna do life with her and she wants to do life with me. I love being married, but here's what I know, that that may not be your experience or the experience of a lot of you watching or listening. Like maybe your marriage is a battle. Maybe your marriage is frustrating. Maybe your marriage isn't something that you're enjoying. And maybe that's one of the reasons why half of marriages fail and 70% of all second marriages fall apart. And that's why I think in our culture, a lot of people just decide not to get married at all because it looks hard. It looks difficult doesn't look fun. It's not enjoyable, right? You ever wonder why some marriages work and why maybe others don't? Maybe yours isn't? You're doing all the right things, right? You're taking all the right steps, but for them, it feels like it's coming together. But for you and your spouse, it feels like it's completely falling apart. And then you start to wonder like, okay, maybe there's a, there's a key, right? What's the key that I don't have? What's the secret sauce that I need? Well, I'm here to tell you, and I'm no expert, But I've been married for 20 years, and what I've discovered is there's no key, there's no secret sauce. There's just a better way forward. And that way forward is honor, the pathway of honor. We talked about this last week to start this conversation. We talked about how honor is the recognition of value, of contribution, of importance. Honor represents a heaviness. It's giving weight to the people around you. Here's how Paul writes about it in the scriptures. He says, that we are to be devoted to one another in love, that we honor one another above ourselves. Like honor and love go hand in hand. And I would even say, I would even argue that in marriage, the expression of love, the greatest expression of love is honor. To dignify your spouse, 
to say to your spouse, I see you and I hear you and I value you. This is why honor is so important in all relationships, but especially in marriage. Because marriage is a gift from God, friends. And the goal of marriage is to reflect the image of God to each other. That what God has placed in us, we get out of us. Who we are, defined by God, we live in that rhythm and we acknowledge it in the person that we've committed our lives to. That's what honor does. It opens your eyes to that. Without honor in marriage, it's just a ceremony. Without honor in marriage, it's just a business agreement. But with honor, it's two souls intertwining together. And honor is the best way forward in marriage. And honor helps you to build a better future for your marriage. And so can we just talk about that today? Can we talk about honor in marriage today? And obviously I'm going to talk a lot about marriage. And I want you to know that if you're not married, maybe you're coupling, maybe you're living together, maybe you're sharing a home with somebody, maybe you're dating, maybe you're engaged, maybe you're even single. The conversation today is not a condemnation of you. The conversation today is not a judgment of you. The conversation today is an invitation into the gift of marriage. Because God is very clear in the scriptures that the greatest expression of romantic relationship, of sexual intimacy, is found in the boundaries of marriage. The problem is, is I think we lack honor. And that's why marriage isn't something that's attractive to us. But when you look at the scriptures, God gives us a great pathway forward. He says the honorable way forward in relationship is this, that we date, we're engaged, and then we get married, and then we have kids, and then we build a future together. And if that isn't your story, again, no judgment, no condemnation of you, but maybe perhaps it's why your story has been so difficult. And I'm believing today, whether you're married or not, whether you're dating or not, whether you're in a relationship or not, that the conversation we have today will be so helpful and hopeful for you and for me. So here's where I want to start. I want to start in the New Testament, the story of Jesus and the story of the church. I really appreciate the writers of the New Testament because these writers are real people who really wanted to pursue God and follow Jesus. They're an example of what it looks like to work on your story while making your story work but specifically to work on relationships and work on their romantic relationships and married relationships. And they wrote some words in letters that were inspired by God through his Holy Spirit. They didn't know they were writing the Bible, but these words they were writing ended up being a part of the Bible in the letters that they wrote to men and women that were just like them, trying to pursue God. And they took the words of Jesus and they dropped them into real life. Peter is an example of that. Peter spent three years with Jesus, probably the best friend of Jesus. And Peter's letters are filled with practical wisdom and application from the words of Jesus. He teased out what Jesus had to say, and he drops them into our regularly scheduled lives to help us to follow Jesus. And Peter actually addresses married life. Now, here's a couple of fun facts about Peter. First, it's believed that he was actually the oldest disciple at least 20 years old, and here's why. There was this discussion that Jesus and Peter and the religious leaders were having about the temple tax, and it was a tax that you would have to pay in that time to be able to continue the ministry of the temple, but only people 20 years and older who were males had to pay that tax. So there's this discussion on if Jesus and his disciples paid the temple tax. And Jesus does this incredible miracle where this fish like gets caught and it has the coin for the temple tax for Jesus and Peter to pay the tax. It's a great, great story found in Matthew's letter. But this is why scholars believe that Peter's at least 20 years old because he had to pay the tax just like Jesus did. Second fun fact about Peter is that he was actually married. And Matthew, who knew Peter, writes about this. There's this moment where we get introduced to Peter's mother-in-law and she's sick. And Matthew says that when Jesus came to Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever, and he touched her on her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up, and she began to wait on him. Now, just a side note, isn't that just like mom energy? You're not feeling good, but you're still taking care of those that you love, right? Here, she gets healed, so it's actually great that she's able to take care of those that she loves, but I love the mom energy in this story. But it's an affirmation that Peter's married. He has a mother-in-law. And then later on, Paul actually affirms that. He's talking about the freedom we have in following Jesus. And then he actually, he makes it personal for him and those that are around him. And he says to Christians in Corinth, 
Don't we have a right to take a believing wife along with us, as do the other apostles and the Lord's brothers in Cephas? Cephas is the Aramaic name for Peter. So the fact that Peter is actually married makes his words, I think, more helpful. Because Peter's trying to work on his marriage while he makes his marriage work. Like he's taking these terms, these discussions, these commands of Jesus and applying it to his own life and what he's learning, he's passing along to us. And I want to show you what he says about marriage and how honor works in marriage in his letter, 1 Peter chapter 3, starting in verse 1. So if you're watching or if you're listening, I want to invite you to open up the Bible if you have it or the Bible app on your phone to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Here's what Peter says. First, he speaks to wives, and he says, be devoted to your own husband. That word devoted is interchangeable with the word honor. And Peter says, here's, here's an example of why honor is so necessary in your marriage relationship. And he specifically talks about a relationship that maybe you have been in or are currently in. He says, when wives honor their husbands, they do so, and it actually draws their husband's attention to God. Here's his words. So that even if some of them, husbands, do not obey the word of God, your kind conduct may win them over without saying a thing. Now, here's what I find fascinating. This is some 2,000 years before you and I existed. But Peter's talking about something that is very relevant to our time today. And here, here's what he's talking about. That the women, the wives, are actually the spiritual leaders of their homes. That more often than not, it's the ladies that are leading their families to Jesus. Now, the scriptures are filled with invitations of men, specifically husbands, to lead their families. We'll get to that in just a minute. But isn't it fascinating that not much has changed over the years? That, ladies, you have been the spiritual influencer in your family. And God honors that. And he, Peter, says when you do this, it actually turns your family's attention. Your husband, specifically, it turns his attention to God. And then he continues, and he says, For when they observe your pure, godly life before God, it will impact them deeply. Last week we talked about how honor is the currency in the kingdom of God. It's how we give and receive. It's like our money. It's how we buy and sell, give and receive and Peter says, wives, when you honor your husbands, especially if they are not followers of Jesus or have fallen in love with Jesus, it's going to be felt, it's going to be noticed, and it'll get deep within their heart and their soul. Now, can I just be clear about something? This is just a mic moment with you, okay? I want to be very clear. Honor is not without wisdom. Peter is not inviting wives to stay in an abusive relationship and try to honor their husband. That is not what he's saying. Peter is not inviting wives to keep quiet if things are a little bit uncomfortable or unholy or unhealthy or dishonorable and try to make it work. That is not what he's saying. He's just saying, I think it's great when you live in the rhythm of Jesus and you honor your husband. And if they don't know Jesus, this will actually help them to know Jesus. Because Jesus is within you. And what comes out of you is honor when Jesus is Lord of your heart and your life. Then he gets really practical with the wives. He says this. Let your true beauty come from your inner personality. Not a focus on the external. For lasting beauty comes from a gentle and peaceful spirit. Which is precious in God's sight. And is much more important than outward adornment of elaborate hair, jewelry, and fine clothes. Now, I've been a Christian a long time, and maybe if you've been a Christian a long time, you have heard these verses used against people, against females specifically. Like, hey, you shouldn't dress up, you shouldn't do your hair, you shouldn't wear makeup, shouldn't do those things. Again, that's not what Peter's saying. I think if Peter was standing here, he would agree with us that there is something good about a great fit, right? There's something great about good shoes. And when your hair is falling into place, that's a good moment and you want to go out, right? This is, this is not Peter being mad or angry. What Peter is actually saying here is that honor starts in the heart. It's not something that you can just put on in a moment and then take off. But that honor starts from within you. And God, God wants your heart. It's what's most valuable to you and to me. It's what's most precious. And God wants to hold your heart in his hands because that's where he does his greatest work within you. Honor, again, isn't something that you just put on. Honor is something that overflows from within you. And according to Peter, a wife who honors her husband 
will help turn his heart towards Jesus. And then he speaks to husbands and speaks to himself. He says this in verse 7, Husbands, in turn, you must treat your wives with tenderness, viewing them as feminine partners who deserve to be honored. Now that phrase, feminine partners, is not a judgment or a dismissal of females. He's just saying that most often, men are more physically strong than women. Most often, not all the time. There are probably some women watching, listening to this that could take me down, and I respect that. But what Peter's saying is, is that, men, you need to know about who you are and how you're wired, and you need to use that for the benefit of your wife. Because husbands, is what Peter's saying, husbands, your wife is honored when she knows how much you care. Not just when you take care of her physically, but when you're aware and take care of her emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Honor will listen. And honor wants to understand husbands. That's what Peter's saying. And then he gives a warning. And he doesn't give this warning to wives. He just gives it to husbands. Listen to what he says. For they, your wives, are co-heirs with you in the divine grace of life. Meaning that just because you're a male and she's a female, it doesn't make you any more loved by God or you receive more from God. You are on equal playing field with God. You are co-heirs. You get from Jesus what they get from Jesus. And what they get from Jesus, you get. No more, no less. And he says, this is why honor is so important. Because when you honor your wife, do so so that nothing will hinder your prayers. I think what Peter wants us to know here is that we can't assume that our dishonorable behavior will be ignored by God. We can't live dishonorably towards our spouse, towards our wife, and think that God will just leave that alone. Maybe it's easy for you to act like a Christian or to act religious, but Peter says, fellas, it's better for you to follow Jesus, to fall in love with Jesus and give your life to Jesus. Don't cover your honor with all sorts of spiritual words and acts and religious practices. It's similar now to what he said to wives. Like, don't get so caught up in what you wear and how you do your hair. That, that's not honorable. That's a good thing, but it's not where honor comes from. And he says the same thing to men. Honor comes from within you. Followers of Jesus give honor. Husbands who follow Jesus honor their wives. Wives who follow Jesus honor their husbands. This is actually where Peter starts. He talks about our relationship with God. He says this, My divinely loved friends, since you are resident aliens and foreigners in this world, I appeal to you to divorce yourselves from evil desires that wage war within you. You follow Jesus. And followers of Jesus live honorably, and it's different than what happens around them. Honor is choosing peace over war. Reconciliation over being right. Joy over bitterness. Choosing you as a spouse over everyone else. And then Peter continues. He says, so abandon every form of evil. Deceit, hypocrisy, feelings of jealousy and slander. Because they aren't honorable. Like he's just a broken record. Live honorably. Follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus, you will give honor. Those, those things that you're doing, they, co- they can cause pain. But honor actually brings about purpose. And so he ends this way. He says, live honorable lives as you mix with those who don't live honorably, those who are unbelievers. And even though they might accuse you of being evildoers, they will see your beautiful works and have a reason to glorify God on the day he visits us. The glory of God feels like a strange thing, right? Feels like somebody on TV a religious person would say, oh, let's give God glory. And maybe a lot of us go, not really sure what that means, but sure. (laughs) So I'll lift my hands, I'll applaud, I'll sing, whatever you think I need to do here in this moment. But what Peter's saying here is that giving glory to God is putting God first. In other words, glory to God tells the story of your heavenly father through your story when you live honorably. Your spouse will know God and what God is like based upon the honor you give them. And so will your family, so will your kids. But question for those that have kids. You want them to have honorable marriages? You know how they learn how to have honorable marriages? By watching you. That's how they're gonna learn. I'm sure there's other ways they can learn, but the number one way they'll learn is by watching 
you. So let's talk about how we can give honor to our spouse. Let me give you three steps. First step, honor your spouse in the way that you speak to them and about them. In other words, what you say, it matters. So for Tiff and I, we have decided that we will not call names, even silly names in silly moments, because we just don't want that to get in our souls. So we're not gonna call each other names. Who you say it to matters. Meaning that if you're frustrated with your spouse, go to them first and not somebody else first. And how you say it matters. Your tone, your posture, your leaning in, your facial expressions, whether it's a red face or not, fist clenched, right? Do you remember when you got married and maybe even when you got engaged, how you asked your future spouse to marry you? It was with a sweet tone, with kind of, you didn't say, hey, marry me, right? Like it was with this love and this honor. Remember that. And here's why. Because it's God's kindness that leads us all to repentance. And it's your kindness that will honor your spouse. Second step, honor your spouse by keeping short accounts. You should never start a conversation with, you know, last week or last month or last year, this happened. That means that you have not had an honest conversation about the way you were offended or something that upsets you. You need to have that conversation with them and not store it away. Your heart is not a junk drawer. You don't store things in your heart to be used later, right? When you keep those things in there, it's painful and it actually will cause pain in your relationship. And so when was the last time that you checked your heart by checking in with your spouse? When was the last time you checked their heart by checking in with them and you had a conversation? Third step of honor. Honor your spouse by choosing purity. Married people, keeping your eyes right here will keep your heart right here. Sexual intimacy is best expressed in the way that God has set up marriage and the healthy, holy boundaries of marriage. And God gave us this gift of marriage and the gift of sexual intimacy. And it's a gift that he says, here's how to use it. Here's the tools, here's the boundaries, here's the way, here's the pathway forward. And I don't think I have to tell you that when sexual intimacy is expressed outside of marriage, it can get really messy. If it's not messy yet, it will get messy soon. You know that, I don't need to tell you that. Maybe you've seen it or experienced it yourself. (laughs) And this isn't God condemning us because he's not a God who condemns us. He's just a God who invites us into redemption. There is a better story and it's the honorable way forward. I think if we were to summarize this whole conversation that Peter writes, I think we could summarize it with three words. Honor leans in, especially when you're married. I had a friend who's teaching on some of these principles at his church and Recently, he sent me what he called the 12 steps to dishonor in marriage that actually lead to us violating our marriage, dishonoring our spouse, maybe even an affair. Here's what he said. You start by leaning away from your spouse. You become aware of another person. You may have innocent meetings that lead to flirting and then that leads to intentional planned meetings. And then in a group setting, you might linger with them in conversation. And then those conversations can shift to feelings and then Those feelings can turn into isolated meetings that are under the disguise of legitimate purposes. And then those isolated meetings actually turn to pleasure and then embraces become affectionate and embraces become passionate. And then dishonor happens, adultery happens. You violate your covenant in marriage and then everything becomes public because you can't hide it anymore. Now you might ask, why'd you share that? Because maybe you're there or maybe you know someone that's there. And it's a good reminder to lean in because we are to be devoted to one another in love. We honor one another above ourselves. Husbands and wives, they honor each other and honor chooses to protect us and protect what we're building. And so maybe for you, you hear this conversation and immediately your heart is broken because Everything that we've talked about that may have been in the negative or not been healthy or holy, you're like, that is my marriage. And it feels hopeless and it feels like nothing could be resolved. But remember, there's always a better story when you follow Jesus. 
And it begins with confession. First to God, here's what I've done, God. Would you set me free? Would you forgive me? And then confession to your spouse. You own your piece of the mess. And then you, and then you live in repentance, which is life change. See, in our culture, we love remorse. Here's the difference between remorse and repentance. Remorse is, I am so sorry. I can't believe I hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. I'm sorry your heart is broken, but then there's no life change. Remorse isn't bad, but repentance is better. Repentance says, I'm going to, I'm going to live differently. As a spouse, I'm going to live differently. I'm going to choose the honorable way forward. You ever heard of the Japanese art form kintsugi? It's when they take broken pottery pieces and they put them back together with lacquer and gold. And actually, those pottery pieces are more expensive after they've been broken and put back together than they were when they were originally made. Maybe that's your story. Maybe your marriage will become more valuable because this season of brokenness has taught you the way of honor. And through confession and repentance, God begins to put the broken pieces back together. So maybe you need to lean in today. Maybe you need to start believing that what the enemy tried to make evil, God is going to turn it for good. Maybe what's complicated, you can begin to uncomplicate by taking a step of having a conversation that you've been avoiding. And if you are like ships in the night with your spouse and you just keep passing each other and you don't make time for each other, maybe you schedule a conversation. I know that doesn't feel spontaneous or romantic at all. But remember, this isn't about being spontaneous or romantic. This is about being honorable. And maybe if you can't talk to each other, you write down what it is that you're thinking and feeling so that your spouse can read it and you can read what they say and actually listen. Maybe you need to invite a couple in, a mentor couple in that will speak to your souls and lead you to Jesus. Maybe you need to go to counseling and keep going and not expect that counseling is going to solve it in two sessions. But maybe it'll take two years. But the honorable way forward says, do, ever, do whatever it takes for however long it takes. Because honor, honor is the best way forward. I don't know what it is for you, but what I know is that honor is the best way forward. I don't know what it is for you, but what I know is that following Jesus means that we will honor each other. Marriage is a gift, and sometimes we don't treat it as a gift. But what honor does is it refocuses our attention on the gift that God has given us between a spouse, husband and wife, and in a family. So friends, would you lean in? And would you choose honor? And would you do whatever it takes for however long it takes to follow Jesus and to honor the one that you've committed your life to? Let me pray some words over you. Heavenly Father, these conversations are heavy, but they don't have to weigh us down but they can remind us that there is a pathway that you have given us called honor that can set us free from some of the nonsense that we have participated in, some of the pain that we have promoted in our relationships. So would you forgive us? Would you set us free? Would you help us to be courageous to step into repentance and live honorably in the name of Jesus? And it's in his name that we pray these things. Amen and amen. And amen. Thank you, Pastor Mike, for that amazing message about honor and honoring our spouses. I know we can all step up in that area and improve our marriages. So thank you for that, Pastor Mike. You know, we have some amazing things coming up. Kids Blitz, the Leadership Summit. We've had some amazing things just happen at Easter. We had 26 baptisms happen. That's amazing, that's fantastic. But it is only possible all of this is only possible because of your generosity, because you give to Active Church and you give more importantly to the mission and vision of what we're doing here, of helping people meet Jesus and learning to follow him. And so today I wanna to invite you to be a part of that. Maybe you haven't done that before. I wanna invite you to, for the first time to be a part of that. And if you have been a part of that, thank you so much for being a part of generosity and this journey that we're on of helping people learn about Jesus. So you can do that in two ways. You can go to activechurches.com and you can hit the give button or you can text the number on the screen and you can text any amount that you would like to give. Thank you for giving with us here at Active. We're so appreciative of everything that your um, giving enables us to do and how it helps us to, again, help people meet Jesus and learn to follow him. 
Hey, thank you for being a part of Active at Home today. We love being a part of your lives in this way. Again, just a reminder, share this if you can so that somebody that may need to hear this message hears it today. And we love you guys. We'll see you next Sunday for Active at Home. Thank you.